Hi hey guys, this is Paradox. Um, this game is Duelist. I've been playing it for, I don't know, a week or so. And um, I figure I've played enough that I can tell the new players some things that I wish I would have known a couple weeks ago when I started playing. Um, overall, this game's really fun. If you played Hearthstone, it's going to be easy to pick up. And I know a lot of people don't like the comparison of this game and Hearthstone because this is more of a board. Well, Hearthstone is more just uh, static cards, um, and this game is really dynamic about movements and how to do things, but um, they still play quite a bit alike. I mean, if you look at if you look at like Magic, for example, um, you've got your all your minions gain all their life back at the end of the turn. Um, you've got just some crazier things that are going on this game it just plays it does play a lot like hearthstone you attack something both of them attack each other life stay or the damage stays throughout the turns um a lot of the abilities are based off of hearthstone abilities you've got provoke which is taunt you've got um let's see you've got opening gambit which is uh battle cry you've got frenzy which is kind of similar to um, the Harvest Watch uh, attack, you've got Rush, which is Charge, you've got um, Death Wish in this game, which is Death Rattle in, in Hearthstone. I mean, things are just very similar. Um, it does play a bit like Magic as well, but this game's also similar because the, the business model is very, very similar to Hearthstone as well. You've got Spirit Orbs, which are essentially packs. You can buy one with gold, or you can buy some with money. Um, they give you at least one rare per pack and five cards. I mean, sounding familiar? I would hope so. Um, now, I will say that for beginners, you get a lot more um, epics and legendaries in these packs than you do in Hearthstone packs, almost three to four times as many. Um, because you can also have more legendaries in a deck than you can in Hearthstone. The... Um, the other thing in this game, other than Hearthstone, you get more dailies per day, you get more gold per game, um, you get... everything's a little bit friendlier. I think they're trying to keep it more approachable to everyone, not just the hardcore players. Despite the fact that this game is arguably a little bit more hardcore than uh, Hearthstone. While I understand Hearthstone gives you um, a little bit of tools and you need to really work around those tools in using your own creativity. This game gives you an abundance of tools which uh, kind of forces you to use creativity. Um, but it also can limit you into certain decks as well. If there's too many tools sometimes, as we've seen in World of Warcraft, when they had 45 talents there was only 3 build options per spec. Then when they added like 15 build options there ended up being 15 build options per spec. So sometimes more options is actually more limiting in a game. But um, putting that aside, that's all arguable, that's all whatever. This is a beginner's guide. This is what you guys need to do first. So the first things first is go into play, go into training grounds, do the tutorial. There's three things, you do the tutorial. You go in here, you do one practice duel, that's all fine. Um, then you have these challenges. I believe the first tier unlocks automatically. You go through and do all of these. Each one gives you not only gold, um, you can't see any of the gold that I get, but the cool part about these is these teach you uh, the, the mechanics of the game, but also all the abilities that your creatures can get. So if you go on here, you're going to see a few abilities. Um, you're going to see flying, which allows you to move anywhere on the map. You've got your regular movement, which is just always two spaces in any direction. Um, which means, well, diagonal, no, you have to do one side, one down. Um, so you can move that, but flying allows you to move anywhere on the map. Um, then you get your abilities, so you can, or your spells. And you can see over here, this one has Dang Wish, which is like Death Rattle, Shaman Shadow Creep. You use this. You can see the creep on the ground. And these challenges show you how to win in one turn using these abilities. So we're going to go forward, we're going to attack. This ends off our challenge. These are just fun in general. So do all of these, they teach you a ton, they give you gold so you can start spending them on packs. 
what I recommend is before you go and do, um, before you start moving on to other things like the gauntlet, for example, please, before you do the gauntlet, make sure that you do all of these, uh, these challenges first. That's the first major thing I recommend. After you do all of these challenges and you've learned all the mechanics of the game and you've done all some of these weird things, now you're kind of prepared on the skill level, then go watch my video about gauntlets. I show you guys a streamer who explains um, a lot about how he does really well in these, uh, these gauntlets and he created a tier list and I link to the tier list and I show you guys how to read the tier list and I show you, give you some other tips on how to do gauntlets do those or watch that video first before you do gauntlets but that's gonna be great for beginners after you've done all these these challenges now the thing about these challenges is a lot of them are uh, locked based off of how many games you've played so like you might only have like the first one and then you have to go play like uh, three 1v1 matches and then five 1v1 matches and then by the end of these you need to do like 25 1v1 matches Go in here, go to ranked, whatever. Don't worry if you're going to lose ranked. That's not a big deal. Um, just go through and play the game. Um, try to learn every time that you lose. Try to look at the decks that other people are playing. Get used to those. Play enough games where you unlock all the challenges. Once you have all the challenges unlocked, then start the end, and you've done all of them, and you've messed around with decks and gone in ranked, then start thinking about doing Gauntlet. The benefits to a gauntlet, and I say this in that other video as well, for new players, it's a great way to build your collection. And it's also a great way to play on an even playing field. Um, because in the beginning, you're not going to have all the cards that, uh, that everyone else is going to have. You're going to have very few. Um, but in a gauntlet, which is essentially arena from Hearthstone, um, you will have all the tools that everyone else has and you just won't know what cards to pick for your deck and hopefully by this time you're already going to know the mechanics of the game because you've done all the challenges um, just using the gauntlet guide that I have will teach you how to build the deck to do decently and then you can also use the tools you learn from the challenges to actually complete it now what do I recommend for buying packs um, in the beginning, don't spend too much gold on packs. The first thing you want to do is you want to level up your uh, each of the, the races. When you level up each of the races, from my understanding, you get a pack at the end of each one. Just by playing the game and doing a certain amount of ranked matches, you get a pack. By leveling up a certain amount of things, you get a pack. I mean, there's there are a ton of packs that they give you for free. So start out by just getting those for free. Do your best to not buy any packs until you've completed all the challenges, you've played ranked a few times, um, and you can start getting into Gauntlet. Use my tools to get through Gauntlet and to start going positive in Gauntlets because you'll get more value out of the Gauntlets than you will out of just buying packs. If you're someone that really just doesn't like Arena slash Gauntlet slash whatever it's called, um, just, I mean, you could you could buy packs, that's perfectly fine. You're just going to find yourself moving along a little bit slower than the people that do the Gauntlet mode. If Gauntlet's not out by the time, because at the, at the moment um, it's only out for like three days a week, but if Gauntlet's not out um, when you guys are going, then yeah, I guess you can buy a couple packs here and there. I personally don't really like Gauntlet that much. Um, it's kind of a necessary evil for me. But um, overall, uh, this should be pretty much the main things you should know. Uh, there is a, a friends list. Um, you can add people after games. There's your settings, your armory. Armory just brings up these. Uh, your profile shows you recent games. It shows you... Um, you can actually watch replays of your recent games, which is pretty cool. Quests, guys, again, it gives you two dailies per day. Do those every day. Build up some gold. When gauntlet mode shows up, use all your gold in gauntlet mode. Um, hopefully you end off your gauntlet day with more gold than what you left off with it's pretty rare but uh, you never know um, the uh, the other thing is you get these first win of the days just honestly guys just play the game try not to disenchant too much in the beginning you don't know what decks are actually good and which ones are not um, I know when I first started I was like oh I want to make this Vitruvian deck where um, everything is these obelisks that 
summon dervishes every turn and they also buff all the dervishes and then you've got these who are dervishes and you've got um, these other abilities that do dervishes and uh, you've got this spell that does extra turns and I thought Vitruvian was like, like the coolest thing ever but then I started actually like reading up and I started playing it and I realized it's one of the more expensive decks to keep top tier. I guess you could say it's kind of like Wallet Warrior. If you can complete the deck, like it's expensive to complete the deck, but if you can complete the deck, um, it has an above average win ratio. But uh, overall, I mean, don't spend too much disenchanting anything. Um, just go through, collect as much as you can, find a class that you enjoy playing or a race, whatever you want to call it, that you enjoy playing and just play the game. Um, if you guys have any other questions for uh, beginning, like just getting into the game, um, wondering how to play certain races, feel free to leave a comment below. Either I'll answer it or some of the other players will answer it. Um, but again, guys, beginners, if I can say anything at all, level up all of your, your classes to level 10. It doesn't even take that long. It takes like, I don't even know, like maybe... Uh, I couldn't even tell you a few games. I mean, a little bit more than a few games. It's probably the same amount of time that it is in Hearthstone um, to get a character from 1 to 10. Level up all your people to 10. Get them to 11 so you get the free pack. Which I'm pretty sure you get a free pack from each one, but I'm, I'm not 100% positive about that. But when you level up these guys, it unlocks all their, uh, their things. You can go into crafting to see what you haven't unlocked yet. Um, like right here, I haven't level this guy to 10 yet so there's still two um, cards that I haven't even unlocked but the thing is guys level them all up to 10 and do all of these challenges if you do both of that you're gonna be prepared to getting into ranked you're gonna be having a lot more fun in the game because you actually understand the the other classes the other races if you're just playing this game and you're constantly losing because you only play one race one of the major reasons why you're losing is you don't know what to play around. It, let's say, for example, you're playing um, against... Uh, th this is actually a pretty good example, was the... Um, uh, what is it called? Vanar. Um, Vanar has this ability, dispel a space and deal two damage to the enemy minion or general on that space. This will silence... Dispel is silence, if you were playing Hearthstone. Um, this is essentially Earthshock. If you're playing against Vanar, you need to make sure not to play too many um, creatures. There's one in particular that I fall for this. I fell for this like every single time um, until we got, until I finally started playing Vanar when I realized I need to play around that card. There's this card called the High Hand. Gain plus one plus one for each card in your opponent's action bar. You draw two cards per per turn. And you usually don't play two cards per turn. So this guy almost always ends up being like a six, uh, six, seven or like higher. Um, so what the the interesting thing about this guy though is he if you dispel him he's back to a two three for a five cast. A little bit too harsh. So if I didn't play Vanar to the max level, I wouldn't know that odds are she's going to have this spell and she's going to use it against me. So it's between just playing all the classes to max level and doing the challenges, you're going to get so much better at this game than you were before, and you're going to feel a lot better at this game. If you don't do both of those, you're going to be like everyone else. You're going to be like, I mean, most people do the challenges, or at least watch videos do the challenges, which if you're that type of person, go watch my videos. They're all short, and I explain um, the... I kind of teach you while I'm doing them, so it's kind of a win-win um, if you just want that free gold. But guys, still, level up all your characters, get the free packs, get the free experience, get the free cards, um, and try to save your gold for gauntlets. Watch videos, learn how to do gauntlets better than everyone else, and um, just do things better than all the other new players that didn't watch this video. If you guys have any questions, um, again, feel free to comment. I've mentioned it a few times. I'll definitely answer them. If I don't, someone else in the comments will, will for sure answer them. Um, overall, thank you for watching.